Tanqua Artscape 2023. Hi, my name is Sam Fortein. Um, I I'm an um, artist when I'm not uh, sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but even when I'm sleeping, I'm an artist. I feel like um, I don't know where to start because it's a really loaded question, you know, what you do. Because um, I do so so many things, but what I do on a daily basis is express myself in the many ways that I can, forms, disciplines. Um, and mm, yeah what brought you here to this artist in residency program how did you hear about mm -hmm. this and then how did the application go I was looking for a new experience um, this is my first residency I was also drawn to uh, the residency after seeing some of the the works that came out last year um, and yeah being inspired by artists like uh, Andile Dilvane and uh, Nkosenati Kuila and uh, Kebo Zuma and Nkutazo Dilvane as well those works were are really powerful and I could see that um, people had taken a journey here. <laughs> people had definitely taken a journey here. So what was your journey so far? We are a week mm. down the road a little bit more. Mm. Uh, my journey so far it's been an otherworldly almost. I feel like in this land um, time is almost stretched. You find yourself placing your foot down in between rocks very carefully, very gently because you know that a wrong step, you know, uh, could lead somewhere else. <laughs> but I'll go back to the first uh, walk we had, which is some way away from the location we are now. That walk took me six hours. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> that Came walk took me six late. hours. Um, after it it uh, could have been an hour, they said, if one walked in a straight line. Right. But something about the landscape made me uh, want to embody the tortoise, um, discopat, as an energy of slowness, um, as an energy of connection. So I walked in that way. Every time I didn't, I was reminded <laughs> <laughs> painfully. The rocks can be sharp. There's a few thorns, but I think, um, yeah, just navigating the the sharp rock in the heat, um, it can be really tough. It can be tough. Uh, but it was so lovely because I didn't once feel like I was lost or, you know, felt held by the space just getting to know each other <laughs> yeah. getting acquainted with one another I think um, it's important when we work with land when we are interacting with it which we do every day even in the urban areas yes. that we are mindful of our relationship um, with the land uh, and what it contains the life it contains so that first walk was really just about asking if it's okay to you know do my work here being open to what the land wanted me to do so have your plans changed what did you apply mm. with and what are you doing now i think plans evolve the reality is that you cannot um, stick to a plan here or anywhere if you haven't been to the space um, because the space determines a large amount of what can and can't be done 
upon arrival, um, we realized that the land was a lot was very sensitive. Um, mm. Too much disruption could be destructive. You know, things like the horizon lines on the on the hilltops. You see what a if something breaks that line, it's very noticeable. Um, so things like that you don't really come with. So you have to um, sort of adapt and change. Uh, so my initial idea was to do something on a hilltop, but that quickly changed. <laughs> and I was speaking to... We are to, downhill now. <laughs> we, are, we are all the way <laughs> within um, the riverbed right now. And it's quite a big one as well. It's talking to JP, the one of the keepers of the land here, he mentioned how there's this relationship between doing something in the riverbed and doing something on the hilltops, on the hillside. Um, so doing something where water flows and doing something where it doesn't. He said that uh, if you install something in this space, uh, it's, it might be taken away by the water. Um, mm. very soon you know because there's floods that happen the soil can't hold water so everything just flows off it and into one big stream one big river I changed my idea or I adapted my idea to be in, in that in-between space I wanted to work with the nature's organic erasure and see what what that does um, but I also wanted something a bit more permanent so I decided to work close to the the riverbed in between two valleys like connecting yeah. and then I, st I started to get to this concept of the hidden you know because this space is, is quite hidden, difficult yeah. to find if you don't know <laughs> yeah I actually thought it was the other hill yes um, yeah. so it is quite hidden and um, I've never played with with that before. Yeah. Um, so this is nice. It's a really fresh opportunity to, you know, work with the land and and uh, around the land, kind of like water itself, kind mm. of, you know, just flowing in between yeah. it. Um, so this space, initially I thought that I would do something at the camp, um, a fire ceremony at the camp, and the next day take that ash and you know go on a journey with it maybe use it as paint but now I felt the need to maybe create a sort of Khan home in in the space for myself so that at a time like this you can still be in the space mm. you know um, sure. at, yeah at the heat of the day you can still um, meditate in the space and feel comfortable yeah. um, so that was how I kind of approached things and to go back to the tortoise the tortoise carries its home on its back always right right so this was a, a kind of metaphor for that as I stack the rocks in it kind of forms this shell right and yeah so luckily you found this yes JP found it actually <laughs> um, with you know, so I gave him some of my ideas and we we looked through a few sites um, and this was the last place we came to. And he was just so excited. He was <laughs> running across these rocks <laughs> like I've never seen before. But yeah, it was a beautiful experience. I just knew. I like gave an offering of Amanzi to the space and it just felt like... That's it. Yeah, you are home here. You can relax so after that I just told JP I'll take a walk from here <laughs> so many artists and also JP I just spoke to him this morning uh, a lot of people were talking about the right space mm. how important is it to find this right space mm. is it all or nothing or is there I don't think so I think space is what you make it, right? Just like your home, uh, wherever you are, it's what you make it. If I hadn't found this space, then 
would have made it work somewhere else. There's so much beauty everywhere, right? Yeah. Um, and I think it we also as um, as people need to stop and pause a bit and realize that a no isn't the end of the world, you know. Um, so to to walk in to space to land and to ask a question may I do this um, and to listen as the wind blows what is the answer mm. you know and if it's no can you respect that answer because something else is waiting for you you know um, so to respect the no of the land is essential yeah. Yeah. Mm. so did you also have any kind of this transformational experience mm. while you were here I was prepared for an experience that would likely change me it definitely feels like a transformational time I think um, I don't just feel it within myself. I feel it uh, within the air. It feels collectively we are moving um, and transforming. And we need to, we need to adapt, we need to change our ways and let the self that needs to die, let that die. Um, so this time has very much been part of that um, letting go and uh, embracing you know new experiences yeah. new lessons you said you were prepared mm. that something might happen with you here mm. what do you mean with prepared prepared as in I was shown one doesn't just come to the Karoo and uh, not expect to, you know, be moved. Um, Have you been here before? No. no. In past uh, <laughs> life consciousness, perhaps, um, or very lightly. So the name come was a doorway into um, my ancestral calling. If an ancestral calling is different for everyone. Some need to work with certain medicines. Some need to work with certain sounds. And I, so I work with my gift, right? Um, which is art. But it's so much deeper than that. It's um, a way of seeing, observation connecting to the ways of observation of um, our ancestors broadens our perspectives and for me gives me a deep sense of rootedness calm peoples branch out into many different families um, but the root of calm is very much um, rooted here in the soil of southern Africa okay. um, and hmm. so um, I'm deeply grateful for this honor to carry this name that is so powerful in the space the sonic space as well and then we get to how I remembered the name um, it's funny that you can almost hear sound for the first time but it feels familiar right yeah yeah mm. so it teaches me every day i learn every day um, how to connect back to the root um, of all things you know um, when i speak about ancestors i don't just refer to human beings I refer to beings 
um, the experience here I mean the last two days you've been pretty much alone here working on your art piece mm -hmm. but it's also a collective experience right mm -hmm. within this group mm -hmm. of other artists how do you experience this does this have an impact on your work mm -hmm. on your ways of thinking or um, I definitely feel that way um, to have creative minds around or minds that um, just offer something different from your own perspective is important um, to see things that you otherwise wouldn't have um, so it's definitely been um, an honor to learn from everyone and their process and everyone so motivated and I think we motivate each other um, so yes as much as I'm here working by myself I have that energy of community very much close by you know mm -hmm. um, mm. the last thing Sam would be if you would have five words to describe the landscape here the environment what would these five words be? Mm. My words to describe the space would be roots, freedom, song, Khan, and Amase. What is Amase? Can you explain for Amase? Amase is divided the truth. The truth, okay. Mm, must be the truth. Um. Yeah. Mm. Thanks a lot. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs>